If you've read stories recently in the newspaper, you've been listening to the radio or watching television, about stories on the mistreatment or maltreatment of veterans. Veterans who sometimes strike back because of psychological problems. You must have asked yourself, what's it like to be a military veteran representing the United States in 2014? Well, I'm gonna ask that question of a military veteran who represented the United States in Vietnam. You left a couple of legs back in Vietnam and you've come back here not to talk to people about your wounds right. or your valor or your medals. You said, I just want to continue being a good citizen like the rest of my family has been. For how long? How many generations, Rick Romley? Uh, it's five. It's five generations back in the 1800s. Former county attorney for a lot of years, now in private practice. What is going on with this VA cover-up that the Republic splendidly investigated. They're cooking the books. That's what it appears to be. I mean, it's, it's, if true, it is probably one of the most outrageous things that I've heard. I, I mean, the, the loss of life of veterans because they can't get in in a timely manner, that, that's been around for some time, but creating two sets of books to lie to the people uh, it, it really is outrageous, and it may even rise to criminal misconduct, quite frankly. And they're talking about up to and possibly beyond 40 veterans who died for lack of care. They just simply didn't get around to taking care of these veterans the way they should have. I don't understand how that's possible. You know, I, I'm not sure anybody does at this point in time, but I, I would bet, Pat, that we just started reading this book, that we're in the first chapter. Uh, I talk to a lot of veterans, and I hear stories all the time. And they may not be dead, they may not have passed away, but other issues as well. And I just, I have this sinking feeling that the veterans of today are still very uncertain as to whether or not they're gonna be taken care of again. Just like it was when I was coming back from Vietnam. You know, the uncertainty of where we were. Why aren't we doing it better? I mean, the valor of our veterans and going back, as you and I have talked before, four and five times. I mean, that was, that's extraordinary. Well, what about in Vietnam? How many tours of duty would be typical? One. One, it was a longer, it was, it was a longer tour of duty. I mean, the Marine Corps was 13 months, but then generally you, you had served and uh, you, you didn't have to go back unless you volunteered or an extraordinary issue would come up. Is that the foundation, in your opinion, for a lot of the psychological problems that our veterans are suffering now? I think that that's a major component to it. They never were able to, you know, they come back for a short period of time, they were never able to readjust. You know, they're, 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 you're in a combat situation every moment. You come home for a bit, you begin to unwind, it takes a while before you can even do that, and then you're thrown right back into it. And it's just not, you know, when you go into a combat zone today, I mean, with the IEDs, it's literally every second. You're not sure what's going to happen to you. And I think that that's a major contributor to the psychological issues. And with that kind of issue, do you begin shooting up Fort Hood? You know, here we have the second shooting. Now, I'm not, you know, the first one was tied to more terrorism, and the second one is, is tied to some type of mental instability. But it's a serious issue. I mean, um, I, I don't understand that myself personally. But when you see the number of suicides today, actually we lose more from suicides than we did in theater, combat theater. You, you have to say, yeah, something, something's there and the VA is not addressing it. Is the military itself, in your opinion, different than it was when you were in Vietnam? Different, yeah, in that there's more expected of the veteran today, like we said, more tours of duty, uh, you know, more pressures placed upon you. Uh, yes, and um, you know, the injuries that are suffered. I mean, when I was wounded, I was considered the exception to survive. I mean, it was really unusual. I mean, injuries are so severe. Today, it's very commonplace, and the injuries are actually worse. The head trauma wounds are, are you know, 
uh, are so severe, and yet we're still not dealing with it. So it is different today. It There's is a different. young person right now watching, and that person is saying, you know what, I'm 18 years old, and I'm not sure that I want to go to college now or enter the military and let the military pay for my college education. Would you recommend mm. a military career for an 18-year-old now? I, I would, in, in the sense that, you know, it, it's the politicians, quite frankly, that put us into the wars and require and put us into how many times they have to continue to go back. You know, Iraq and Afghanistan, it's 10, 12 years. It's requiring our military to do that. The military does do a good job, and there is a, there is, you, there is a closeness with that. What the problem is, is when you come out of the military, and, and the inability to take care of that individual, to decompress or take care of their war injuries. We're going to have to learn, though, aren't we? You know, why haven't we learned? I think that's the bigger question. And, and you know, I really do believe it's time for heads to roll. I think that this is not acceptable. Veterans dying just because they can't get an appointment. That's wrong. And if they have two sets of books, heads should really roll. And we should not be pushing this under the table anymore. Semper Fi. Semper Fi. Rick Romley, former county attorney, and now perfectly happy with the title, Great Citizen. <laughs>